Welcome to For the Common Good with Juanita Farrow, a show where we inform, inspire, and empower our businesses and communities and people just like you. I'm really excited about the show today because we are talking about the connection between nature and religion. Stay tuned. We're going to talk more about that. But the guest who is here with us today to help us with understanding that connection is Deacon John R. Grisham, Jr. And let me tell you a little about him. He's a native of King William County in Virginia, graduate of Virginia State University and the Evan Smith Church Leadership Program at Virginia Union School of Theology. He was a Baptist pastor for 17 years before converting to Orthodox Christianity in 2014. Ordained to the diaconate of His Grace Bishop Thomas and serves as, serves as St. Basil the Great Orthodox Church. He also serves on the National Board of the Fellowship of St. Moses the Black. And he's an education support specialist for the York River State Park. So we are going to have a great show today understanding this because you do so much here. Wow. Welcome to the show. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. I am so glad we have this opportunity. Now, tell me, you are a certified interpretive guide. Um, Virginia Master Naturalist and a Watershed Educator and Park Ranger at the York River State Park. Please tell us what all that means. All that means is that I have a chance to do a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. And with the Watershed Educator Program, that was through the Virginia Department of Environmental Quality. Mm -hmm. And some of the classes were also from the Chesapeake Bay Foundation. Mm -hmm. In fact, we did some training at Port Isabel Island, which is right beside Tangier Island, and as well as getting familiar with the Chesapeake Bay ecosystem, um, we also learn more about the different uh, river systems that we have in Virginia. Um, everything from topography, ecology, and also the creatures that swim in these waters. Um, and this coincided with my training as a Virginia Master Naturalist, which is a statewide program. We have Master Naturalist chapters throughout the state. Mm -hmm. And we learn about the forestry of different regions in the state, as well as forestry. We also learn um, some basic botany, most of our members in the Historic Rivers chapter here in Williamsburg are avid bird watchers and I'm kind of like the odd man out. I'm more of a fish guy myself. <laughs> I never thought of it that way. I think we connected recently because I had a picture on Facebook that I posted and it was, a uh, well, I it was a know. northern harrier. I had no idea what it was, and I'm thinking, this is a hawk, but I don't know anything beyond that. And I wasn't even sure it was a hawk, but you immediately, that's da, 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 northern harrier. Yeah, also known as a marsh hawk. Attracted to the wetlands. Yes. Unique to this area? Um, fairly common in the coastal plain. I had one in my backyard, so <laughs> it's like I knew the bird. I was like, ah, northern area. Wow, that's <laughs> yeah. amazing. So what, what sparked your interest in nature and the outdoors? Mm. I would say my brother and I going to our grandparents' house in King William County, taking nets and just catching crayfish and different types of minnows and, and tadpoles. And then when we moved to Northern Virginia, there happened to be a creek there as well. 
So my brother and I set up our own little aquariums in the backyard. My mother was fine as long as we kept everything in the backyard. <laughs> oh, yeah. Except for the time we brought the snake home. She was not, oh, no. No, she, she was not happy with the snake. Oh, I can't imagine. It was not venomous, but no. Nah, it doesn't dope. matter. It moves and it looks and <laughs> it's a snake. <laughs> yeah, well. Wow. Yeah, but we, we had been doing that for years. And I had the opportunity to become a ranger at York River State Park basically because I did a lot of outdoor photography mm -hmm. as a means of relaxation. Mm -hmm. And I had this wonderful picture of a bald eagle. I guess it didn't see me as I was on the on the pier, but I showed the photograph to a couple of the office staff members, and I figured, okay, well, working as at the time I was working as a substitute teacher, so I needed a job during the summer. Anyhow, I was thinking I was going to cut grass and clean toilets in the park manager looked at my resume, he was like, you will do some, a few other things as well. So, uh, Wow. So this goes a while back that you, you've had this interest in nature and outdoors. Yeah, ever since I was a kid yeah. and I had the opportunity to, to get a job running around in the woods and playing in the water because that's what I did as a kid. I ran around in the woods and played in the water. Mm. But now I get paid for it. What an what a <laughs> awesome opportunity. It's really an opportunity. It's it's great because you get to see everything there. And yeah, I love, I love, love, love nature. I mean, it's I'm fascinated with it. Mm -hmm. um, don't like crawly things and like to keep my distance from most things. Okay. But I love watching it. All right. So what if somebody were interested? Just give me an example. For instance, um, I love outdoors. And if somebody was considering bird watching, for instance, just that one example, mm -hmm. what could they expect to see here in this area? Well, um, it depends on what they're looking for. Right. I would say that m many people get into bird watching through the backyard, typical backyard species, mm -hmm. your songbirds, your robins, your blue jays, mm -hmm. um, and they'll set out little bird feeders and, and just patiently watch so they can take camp pictures of, of the different birds as, as they come in, in and out of the feeders. But also, we're not far away from the Colonial Parkway where you're driving right along the York River in some places, or in some places you're driving along the James River. So they'll, in the spring and summer, you'll have osprey, you'll have bald eagles, but you'll also have um, some shorebirds, such as sandpipers, clapper rails. Um, and in the wintertime, you'll have waterfowl, mm -hmm. you know, different varieties of ducks. Canvasbacks are one of my favorites because they usually stay in rafts of about 200 birds and they swim all, and dive almost in unison. So it's, oh, really? Oh, it's a that's really exciting thing to see when you see 200 ducks all of a sudden just diving and surfacing in, in some sort of regular pattern. So do you have that at the park as well? Have yes. Have you seen that? Seen oh, that yes. Um... We don't start seeing waterfowl until, I guess, November, and we'll have some waterfowl species around until maybe the end of March. But along with the waterfowl, we'll also have some bald eagles flying in from Canada as well. Hmm, wow, right. And so that's common in this area. So does this area differ very much from, like, Northern Virginia, for example? Or well, it's pretty much the same in terms of what you might see. There's some slight differences um, between Williamsburg and let's say um, Fairfax County. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that because we're closer to the bay itself, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to see more of the sandpiper species. Mm -hmm. And you don't see black skimmers quite as much here as you would, let's say, um, Grandview in Hampton or in Matthews County yeah. at Bethel Beach. But yeah, we, we tend to see a few more of the shorebird species than you would see, like, let's say, in uh, Fairfax County. 
This is so awesome. We're gonna have to take a short break and we're gonna be right back. We're gonna hear more about your work and, and the outdoors and also we're gonna talk about religion. So we're gonna start to make that connection. We're gonna take a short break. We'll be right back. Don't you go anywhere. Great. Um, you know, Deacon John Grisham Jr. is just, I mean, when it comes to the outdoors, um, you know, just to know all of these things about what's what's happening in the outdoors and, you know, it's birds, it's fish, because you like fish. Love them. What, what what fish are we, right now, what's, what's happening right now with fish this oh, time of the year? Well, I mean, this time of the year, because of the heat, um, they're not going to be very active in the mid-morning or certainly the mid-morning, mid-afternoon hours. Usually if for freshwater um, species, they're going to be more active just before dawn and just before dusk. Hmm. Whereas your saltwater species, everything depends upon the tide. As long as the tide is moving, it can be a moving low tide, it can be a moving high tide, but as long as the tide is moving, that means that the bait such as your worms, your shrimp, um, your bait fish, they're moving along with the tide, so naturally the predators are gonna be around as well. Ooh, awesome. We also know that, and I mentioned earlier, that religion is a very important part of your life. And let's talk about the connection between this nature that we've been talking about and religion. What is that connection to you? Well, that connection to me is that nature is a place where I'm away from everything and everybody and I can reflect on myself. I can reflect on right decisions that I've made, wrong decisions that I've made. I can reflect on um, my need for repentance and also my need to just thank God for everything that had taken place. And a part of that comes from our Orthodox Church tradition of the African Desert Fathers. Um, when Constantine legalized Christianity, he did not invent Christianity, he legalized it, mm -hmm. ending the great time period of persecutions. Um, St. Anthony and many of the other um, Desert Fathers went into the areas of along the Nile, the desert areas along the Nile, not for some sort of feel-good retreat, but to really struggle against their own passions of, of lust, of anger, of greed, and, and the other things that they needed to work on, but they also worked on developing um, virtues such as patience and stillness. Mm. So um, I, I see myself looking at the Desert Fathers and looking at their tradition um, which spread from Egypt southward to Ethiopia and then eastward to Syria and then even northward um, into the Russian forest where you had a Russian monasticism called the Northern Thebaid. And the Thebaid, of course, the original Thebaid, of course, is in Egypt. So, so that that's how I see the connection. Mm, wow, that's amazing. Now, of course, you're a member of the Orthodox Christian Church, but help the viewers to understand because I like to use every opportunity possible to educate people. Right. That's really important. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's not all the same. So, what are some of the major differences between the Orthodox uh, Christian and the Catholicism and the Protestant? Um, Christianity. Well, Orthodoxy is the oldest expression mm -hmm. of the Christian faith and we maintain the oldest traditions of our worship, our liturgical mm -hmm. worship, that our bishops um, serve in a brotherhood along with one another. Mm -hmm. We do not have um, one designated Pope who is the 
uh, ruler of all Christians, but our, our archbishops in our various jurisdictions that they govern the church, more, more in the collegiality, I think the word is I'm looking for, and that our faith does not dictate that you must fast. But instead, we're thinking that fasting is such a wonderful mm -hmm. tool for spiritual development. Why not do it? Mm -hmm. So or orthodoxy takes on ancient Christian disciplines, um, asceticism we call it, not out of force, but more out of a yearning to be closer to God, right. a yearning for repentance and a yearning to obtain more of the more of the characteristics of, of the Christian life. Unfortunately, with Protestantism, a lot of Protestantism had cut away so much of the liturgy, so much of the iconography, that it's just me and my Bible. And okay, well, first of all, it was the Orthodox Church that decided upon what books would be in the New Testament, mm -hmm. and that we still use the same. Septuagint Old Testament that the apostles would have used. So it's kind of a shame that in Protestantism they've reduced it down to just one book, whereas the Christian life is about the whole of the life and the whole of the experience mm -hmm. of, of Christianity. And whereas Roman Catholicism is added things like papal infallibility, um, saying that, Jesus, that the Holy Spirit proceeds from both the Father and the Son, which no, he only proceeds from the Father, and the scriptures teach that as well. So it's kind of like Catholicism added too much to the Christian faith, but mm -hmm. Protestantism took too much out. Mm -hmm. But in some ways, aren't all religions, uh, you know, the basic foundation of uh, eternal truths? What do you think? Well, we believe that there is a seed of truth in every religion. Mm -hmm. There's definitely mm -hmm. a seed of truth in every religion. Mm -hmm. Our task as Orthodox Christians isn't so much to say to the Muslim, oh, you're going to hell because you believe in Islam or you're going to hell because you, you believe in this. Um, we know where the church is. Right. We don't know where the church is not. So when we encounter people of other faiths, we try to see where they are and, and listen to where they are. And hopefully we live a life that others will see in feel that they want to be a part of. Mm -hmm. So that, that's where we are. It's always in the walk. Huh? Yes, Not always the in the walk. Always yeah. in the walk. That's awesome. We're going to take another break right now. And when we come back, we are going to hear more. You've been listening to For the Common Good with Juanita Farrell. We'll be right back. Welcome back to For the Common Good with Juanita, and I have been talking, um, today on the show about the connection between nature and religion and Deacon John R. Grisham, who Jr. is also um, is talking to us as a park ranger, but he's also very active in the Orthodox Christian Church. And I wanted to, to talk to you, um, Deacon John, about finding peace. You know, we live in an environment right now where 24-7, there is news. It's a news cycle and it's constant. So how do we detach from that and how do we start to live, not Prayer. just exist? Prayer. Um, in the Orthodox mm. tradition, we have what's called the prayer of the hours. Mm. That every time of prayer is also a time that expresses 
our salvation history. 7 a.m. or maybe 6 a.m., depending on what time you wake up, is the first hour. Mm -hmm. And then and at that first hour, we focus on our Lord's resurrection. Then about 9 o'clock in the morning, and this is also found in the book of Acts chapter 2, that at 9 o'clock or the third hour, we call that the, the hour that the Holy Spirit comes into the world. And then at noon, which is the sixth hour, um, that's the hour of our Lord's suffering and crucifixion. And then at 3 p.m. is the ninth hour. And the ninth hour is, of course, our Lord's death. Leading into about six in the evening, um, that's Vespers, which is the liturgical new day. Um, according to the book of Genesis. And then finally, before bed, um, we usually pray a short compline prayer. Mm -hmm. and, and then for those who are total insomniacs, midnight prayers as well. And, and that cycle of prayer, we, we remind ourselves that we're still in this journey with the Lord. Mm -hmm. So the prayers that we have remind us of that journey and once when you're reminded of that journey you're thinking gee msnbc and fox just does not seem that relevant mm -hmm. anymore that there is something deeper that i'm committed to mm -hmm. so, so that, that that's why i say prayer but also um turning the tv off mm -hmm. turning the social media off mm -hmm. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a book written by some Orthodox monk back in 321 AD. Mm -hmm. But when was the last time you picked up a National Geographic and said, oh, here's a story about Madagascar? Or let's say, had an ice cream cone and just simply people watched for a little while. Mm -hmm. You know, just... Get away from that whole cycle because if you want something to worry about, mm -hmm. this world will give it to you mm -hmm. very easily. All you have to do is open your eyes and it's there. But if you open your eyes and focus on what is really meaningful, you'll find peace. I love that. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you so much for being on the show. It, it, it's you know, to try to, to listen to what you're saying and really be present in the moment. Mm -hmm. Because so much of our time we spend worrying and thinking about, you know, the future and tomorrow that we're very seldom breathing and present in the moment and being appreciative and grateful yes. for what we have. Yes. So thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. And thank you for tuning in to For the Common Good with Juanita. We'll see you next time.